Uh, dear sisters and brothers, this morning we are uh, privileged once again to be in this space that our Lord Jesus is in. And our Lord Jesus is even in this space that we are right now in this sanctuary. It may look like an office, it may look like not the perfect church, but this is a church and our Lord Jesus is present in this sacred space, your sisters and brothers. And as we uh, have just read from uh, the testimony according to St. Matthew, we are in St. Matthew's chapter 9, verses 1 to 8. And Jesus heals his paralytic man. So there are a couple of things here that we must uh, take note of. There are a couple of points here that we must uh, definitely uh, keep close to our heart. But one of the first things is that the main point of this whole uh, event that happened is not that Jesus was trying to, you know, uh, perform any kind of, uh, you know, wonders and uh, miracles only for, you know, people to know who he was. But he was also attending to the needs of the humble people who came to him. And through this, he points out one thing to the people that I am God incarnate in this world. I am your Messiah. I am God. And he tells this how. First he does it by forgiving the sins of this man. And why does he forgive the sins? It says here that he had, he looked at the faith of the friends that brought this man. And we have an account of this also in Mark and also in Luke. And in that account of this happening, of the friends bring, bring this paralytic, paralytic, paralyzed man, we see that they actually lower him down. You know, they open up the, the roof where Jesus was and they lower him down. And four friends, I believe, carrying him on this bed, they lower him down and before Jesus and he sees their faith. We'll come back to our main point. But it's also a point here of friends, dear sisters and brothers. Do I have one friend who would do that for me? In fact, four friends who did this for this man. Do I have one friend who would pray for me? In fact, four friends for this man. And as we just contemplate the power of these friends having faith in our Lord Jesus, as we contemplate the power of friends praying for us, what we have here today is offertory prayer. Don't we have offertory prayer? We have offertory prayer. And that is your friends and family praying for you. And we are a community of God, dear sisters and brothers. We are friends to each other. We are friends of our Lord Jesus. We heard such a beautiful hymn this morning. What a friend we have in Jesus. And we know we have that friendship in Jesus. But we must also look for that friendship among one another. Coming back to our main point, your sisters and brothers, is that of how our Lord Jesus saw the faith that these four friends had. We are not even sure if the man had faith or not. But his friends had faith. They said, this is the healer. This is the person. We bring our friend to this healer, this rabbi, and he's going to walk again. He's going to be restored. He's going to come back to us and we can be friends again, enjoy ourselves again. And when we contemplate that, we just remember that God answered the faith that these friends had. And what does he say first to the, to the paralytical man? He says here in verse uh, it's right here. Take heart, my son, your sins are forgiven. In the second verse, take heart, my son, your sins are forgiven. And then Jesus, knowing the hearts of these Pharisees and these people who were out to get him, knowing they are reading their hearts and minds, he knew that they were thinking he's blaspheming. And then he addresses that. And he says, the reason I said your sins are forgiven is not because 
His sins have made him the way he is. He's not paralyzed. He's not suffering because of any sins that he's committed. That's not the reason why Jesus first forgives his sins. We may misinterpret this and think that. But Jesus says here, why did I say this first? That your sins are forgiven. I say it first because I want you to know that I have authority to forgive sins. And they know that only God has authority to forgive sins. So by him saying that, he is saying that I am God. I am Emmanuel, God with us. I am amongst you. I am with you. And I am here to forgive your sins. That's his first and foremost reason for saying your sins are forgiven. Sometimes we can think, you know, and many people will ask us, what have I done that I'm suffering so much in this life? There's some sins that I have committed or there's some sins that uh, uh, people in uh, my ancestry have committed and which is why I'm suffering like this. But that's not the case. We go back to who our Lord Jesus describes our Heavenly Father as in Matthew chapter 6 and even in Luke. Uh, he says it very clearly that our Father in Heaven can be compared to our Father or our Mother here on Earth. That love that our Father and Mother have for us here on Earth, that's the, you can, you can multiply it by infinity, the amount of love that God has for us. Doesn't our Lord Jesus say, who amongst you will give your son a snake when he asks you for bread? No, you won't. You will give him bread. You will give him sweet bread and you'll give him more than that along with the bread. Because that's your love that you have for your child. And that's the love, dear sisters and brothers, that our Heavenly Father has for each one of us. And for each one of us, even... He has that compassion, that need to heal us, that, that want. He wants us to be healthy and happy. But we are living in a world that is full of sin. It's a fallen world, dear sisters and brothers. And even the most pious among us, even the most holy among us, do suffer. We suffer different kinds of physical disabilities. We suffer emotionally. We suffer financially and we suffer many other uh, things that people in this fallen world have to suffer. But it's not because of our sins. God is not a God that sees that, you know, Sunil is sinning in this way. So let me punish him and persecute him and, you know, burn him like, uh, you know, you would take a magnifying glass and burn some ants. No, that is not the way God loves us. God is just there with open hands, like the way the prodigal son, we have that parable of the prodigal son where our Lord says, I'm just waiting for you to love you, to redeem you, to bring you back to me. And that is the exact reason he sends our Lord Jesus into this world, God incarnate amongst us. And our Lord Jesus, you are present here in this room with us. I praise you, God. But God with us. God is with us to forgive us, to heal us, to restore us. When we read further about these people and about how they had the opportunity to believe God because he was there in their midst. Yet we read this and we believe it by faith that our Lord God, our Lord Jesus is, is the one and true God who came to redeem us. And dear sisters and brothers, when we hear these words, rise, pick up your bed, and go home, go along your way. That's also something our Lord Jesus is telling us this morning. Rise from whatever struggles you're having. Rise from whatever suffering you're having. And submit it to me in prayer. Submit it to your friends who are praying for you. And I will answer those prayers. I will answer it in my time, says our Lord God, says God. I will answer it. But I will answer it. I don't want you to suffer. Arise and walk in peace from this uh, church this morning. 
arise and walk confident that God is walking with you in all of your sufferings, in all of your trials, in all of your tribulations. As we see in this world, there is so much of uh, so much of sadness, so much of violence, so much of conflict. But when we cling to our Lord Jesus, we have hope. When we stay rooted in this word, dear sisters and brothers, in these holy scripture, we have hope, we have joy. And this is something that we are commanded to, we are requested to share with those who are most thirsting and most in need of hearing the hope that can only be found in our Lord Jesus Christ. So as we go into this new week, though there are a lot of things happening in this world, let us go with the joy and peace that only our Lord Jesus can give. Let us arise and walk and go and take our sufferings to him this morning in prayer, in our offertory prayer, and each day in prayer. And let us find four friends, dear sisters and brothers, who can do this for us, who can pray for us. Because it's very important for other people also to be praying for us. Because we don't make this journey as Christians alone, dear sisters and brothers. We make it as a community. And I request each and every one of you to be praying for me and one another. And I'll also, I also am be praying for you every morning in morning prayer and evening prayer, whenever I pray morning prayer and evening prayer. Unfortunately, presently my schedule is not allowing me to do it each and every single day, which I'm supposed to. But whenever I am doing it, I pray for each and every one of you. And that's how we can make this journey. When you are praying for me, I'm strengthened. When I'm praying for you, you are strengthened. When Father Gregory is praying for all of us, we are all strengthened. Isn't it? And that is the joy and the beauty that, you know, you may be in any kind of situation on that given day, but somebody or the other is praying for you. And God sends his angels to comfort you, to be with you, to lift you up. Dear sisters and brothers, let us arise and walk peace, joy, and hope in our hearts. Let us pray. Almighty God and Father, we just thank you for the gift of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. We thank you, Father, for this beautiful testimony that uh, St. Matthew has given us. And Father, as we arise from this uh, uh, chairs that we are sitting on, as we arise and walk into this new week you have given for us, we pray that you would fill us firstly with your healing. Touch us everywhere, Father, that we need healing. Fill us where we need your encouragement. Sustain us through our difficulties. And Father, I just pray that you would bring people before us that we may testify to them about you and the hope that can only be found in your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. So Sunil was talking to us about prayer, and that is the way we talk to God. And how does God talk to us? Through scripture. When my son was doing his journey through Anglicanism into Orthodoxy, we were up in a monastery in Etna, California. And I was there as an Anglican, so I was not part of the group. And the bishop took me in because he wanted to find out all about what's going on in the real world. So the archbishop was talking to me, and as we were talking, he never made eye contact. Not once. It fluttered up towards the skies. And after a couple minutes of talking with him, a very gentle person, you know, least among equals, as they say in the Orthodox tradition, I asked him, I said, you know, are you focusing on what I'm saying? And he, oh, he says, yes, Greg. He says, but we're always in prayer, and we multitask that way. And the order up there was um, an academic. They all had at least two doctorates, if not more, spoke three or four languages. And he says, you know, when I pray, I, I pray in Greek. And some days I pray in Russian. Some days in English. I said, that's fascinating. But they're able to do that. They have such a humble spirit. Well, we're going to prepare the table now. And as we do, it's your opportunity to put in your prayer requests. Suzanne takes very good care of our prayer lists. And it's very helpful the way she is able to manage that. So please let us know what you're thinking in your prayer requests, and we'll take it before God. Now we'll prepare the table as we do that. <laughs>